Hello everyone, this is Tim from Flare Fabrication, and today I'm going to be unboxing a new laser I just received, which is a Cloudray CR Series CO2 laser, and we'll also be going through initial setup of the laser. More specifically, what I have here is the 100 watt CR7050C model, which has a 28 inch by 20 inch working area and a laser tube rated for 100 watts output. The machine I got is right in the middle as far as size goes, and Cloudray also offers the same machine in a larger and smaller size. Getting into the unboxing now, the machine was delivered right to my door in a liftgate truck and came well packaged and protected in this wooden crate. Using a pry bar and a cordless driver, we got the crate open in no time and got our first look at the laser. The machine was very nicely wrapped up in plastic and had lots of paddings on all sides to keep it safe during shipping. To fill any empty voids, it appears that they used some leftover packaging, which I actually thought was a good idea since it puts to use scrap packaging materials that would have just been thrown away otherwise. After taking out a few more screws, we get all of the other panels removed from the crate and get a full 360 degree look at the laser. As you can see, the machine is well padded and wrapped up on all sides. Now for the fun part, unwrapping the laser and getting all the padding removed. Here we have the Ruida control panel, main power, and laser power switches as well as a built-in ammeter and air pressure adjustment knob. One feature I also really love in this laser is the signal light to show you when the laser is running. Over on the side of the machine we have the laser legs, and inside are a few accessories like ducting, wheels, and this pouch which contains tools, cords, and accessories. If you open the lid you'll actually find that the water chiller is nicely packaged inside. Around the back of the machine, opening up this bottom door, you'll find a nice inline duct fan for fume extraction and this very nice air pump to be used for the air assist. Now when you receive your laser, it's always a good idea to closely inspect the laser tube to verify that no damage occurred during shipping. This machine was well packaged and the laser tube is mounted with some high quality padded mounts, so the laser tube was in perfect shape. The 100 watt machine comes with a high quality Resi laser tube and actually has a test report printed right on it. You can see that even though the laser tube is rated for 100 watts, the test report shows that the peak output is 117 watts and the average output is 108 watts, which is really awesome to see because a lot of times laser tubes end up making less power than what they're rated for. The other thing I'm really thrilled about on this laser is the beam combiner. This system works by projecting a low powered red laser into the same path as the primary beam. So this way you have a visible laser at the nozzle end that helps you to determine exactly where the laser will hit. This can also save you a lot of time when performing lens alignment. Another component I spotted which I was very impressed by was this double flex coupler which is used to couple together each of the drive belts for the Y axis. This is a very nice touch that Cloudray have added since these couplers greatly help with reducing backlash, improving accuracy, and reducing the strain on the motors. The next thing I'm going to do is get the legs mounted on. You'll first want to get the adjustable legs and wheels attached which are connected with these black socket head screws. As for getting the legs mounted to the machine, I'm afraid I don't have a video of doing this, but it isn't all that difficult. The machine is quite heavy though, so you'll definitely want an extra set of hands to help you out with this. Next, I want to briefly talk about some important steps to take before operating the laser. I'll try to cover most of the things you'll need to know, but I would still highly recommend that you read through the user manual found on the Cloudray website 
before you start operating your own machine. First thing is the three zip ties you'll find on each belt within the machine. These are put in place to prevent the axes from moving during shipping, but they'll need to be cut off before use. You will also notice zip ties on the end of the belts, but these should not be cut off. And of course, just to be very careful not to cut the belt when you're removing the zip ties. You'll also notice that the viewing window looks very opaque on the machine, and that's because it has a protective film on each side to protect it from any scratches during shipping. In order to get this film removed, you'll just need to remove the nuts that hold in the metal bezel, and that'll allow you to pull out the viewing window and remove the film. Another very important step you'll want to take before turning on your machine for the first time is making sure that the laser nozzle is fully retracted. When the machine is turned on, the cutting bed will travel all the way up to find its home position, And if the nozzle isn't retracted fully, then they could collide, which is definitely bad news. Next, I want to briefly talk about setting up the water chiller. When you're connecting the water chiller to the laser, it's important to note that you want to connect the outlet on the water chiller to the inlet of the laser, and the inlet of the water chiller to the outlet of the laser. The default settings on the water chiller will work okay out of the box, but for more information on properly setting up the water chiller, I would highly recommend you watch Matt's video at MW Laser. And finally, the last thing I want to discuss is the maximum operating current for the laser tube. In order to prolong the life of any glass CO2 laser tube, there's a particular maximum current draw which shouldn't be exceeded. The laser tube in my machine is a Resi W4, so I checked on the Resi website and found that the maximum recommended current draw is 28 milliamps. Now that I know this, I can run tests with my laser, slowly increasing the power percentage until I determine at what percentage I reach 28 milliamps of current draw. For my machine, it was right around 75% power, but every laser is a little bit different, so it's good to run through this exercise with your own laser. That's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something from it. Have a great day, and as always, thanks for watching.